Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second episode of Squared Triangle, our wrestling offshoot of the Without Context podcast. Uh, today, we are going to talk about WrestleMania. Um, we were going to do this a little earlier, but things got in the way as uh, it was a little rough over the week. It was a little rough uh, last week for many of us here. Um, there was a cold front in Texas and Oh boy! Yeah, anyway. a lot. A lot of us just got hit by the weather changes pretty hard, so we put yeah. it off uh, until today, and we're going to be going yeah. through both nights of WrestleMania, uh, on this episode, and kind of our thoughts about it, and you know the aftermath of it all, and all that. So this is probably going to take uh, be a little longer of an episode than we that's why usually these are like monthly put episodes. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why these are monthly and not like you know. These are going to be covering the big events, so these aren't going to be a weekly episode, so we get to take our time a little more uh, with mm-hmm. these. We know that there was a uh, a stardom and a new and a, a new Japan event. Uh, given mm-hmm. the means to like watching those and also the time frame, uh, we don't really we're not going to really cover a lot of New Japan stuff. We will talk about it, but we're not going to cover the events and everything. I know there was one big title uh, change, which is all over my Twitter today. So that's a pretty cool indication of the direction that they're going. So we might bring up that. I know X has some stuff he wants to talk about. Or uh, somebody wanted to talk about New Japan stuff today. Wait. I want... Uh, uh-oh. Did we lose X? X. <laughs> okay. All right, we're so, back from technical uh, difficulties. <laughs> got it out of the way. Yeah. Um, but as I was saying, yeah, we're going to be covering American events for the most part, uh, AEW, WWE, and then Forbidden Door will touch on New Japan and everything. And I think that mm-hmm. this title change that happened today is going to be make it really interesting for Forbidden Door, uh, especially if it stays in the uh, title holder. But let's get into WrestleMania. It is the big season finale of WWE, or it should be. And it seems like they kind of dropped the ball uh, a little bit near the end here. But we'll get start with uh, the first match of the weekend, which officially was the Battle Royale. Uh, Lashley won it, and then he did nothing all weekend. So the first real match of WrestleMania that had any kind of consequence was uh, Theory versus John Cena. John Cena. And I just have uh, some notes here. They gave Theory the jobber entrance. It felt like they gave him like a very brief just walk down to the ring. And then John Cena had his big entrance with all the Make-A-Wish kids. Everything Mm -hmm. coming out to a big hero welcome. And then Cena gets pinned by a low blow. Hey, look, when you look back at this match. Like when Austin Theory refers back to this match in five years, he's going to be like, I beat John Cena. And not a one of you is going to look back and backtrack and fact check is like, Oh yeah, he won because you know he low he got the low blow in. Like that's kind of how Randy Orton became the legend killer. He yeah. like spat in people's face, low blowed, roll up, grab the tights, whatever you had to do. He beat, Sh- but no one cares about that. It's like I beat Shawn Michaels, I beat the Undertaker, I beat Mick Foley, I beat Hulk Hogan. Yeah, there was a, a point in this match where after the ref bump, Theory did tap to. I don't know how after all these years he still locks in the worst looking STF in wrestling, but he still somehow continues to do it. Uh, Theory taps, refs bumped, so it doesn't count, and then he takes the low blow and Theory picks up the win. It did what it was supposed to do. It wasn't a particularly exciting match. I mean, John looked kind of winded about five minutes into the match, so. John's an old man. I mean, it was just a pretty standard match for um, an opening for WrestleMania. You know, it pretty much was designed to do what it was supposed to do. And that's basically set up Austin Theory to be, the, you know, the successor yeah. eventually in the main event. Pass scene. the torch. Yeah, yeah, it was a passing of the torch match and nothing else. It did feel like that. It was like, hey, here's our new big, here's like the start of a new big heel uh, champion. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think it really did add to it the fact that Cena came out to all the Make A Wish kids. And then just like lost in the middle of the ring. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, wow, I hate this guy, Austin Theory. <laughs> it's like, it would, have, it would have been extra effective to make wish kids came out and like kind of like picked up Cena like this and like left like that. It was a uh, having all the make wish kids that John's probably, you know, been to and visited uh, was the first of two 
kind of feel good uh moments mm -hmm. involving children over the weekend uh, we'll probably we'll touch on that one during the women's title match Oh, I, I will say this about Austin Theory though. He had a really good looking rolling blockbuster on Cena. He did. Yes. That, that, that was that was like, pretty That dope. was really clean. I loved it. Yeah. So not really much to talk about this match. It did what it was supposed to do. It gave the crowd John Cena for the day. Uh you had your big, you know, return at Mania, which was John Cena coming back. So yeah, pretty standard uh, US title match. Mm. Uh, then we get on to match two, which was probably the first thing that I thought this is going to be a good fucking show. It was the men's uh, four team tag team match, which yep. was awesome. This was yeah, I didn't, they, they I didn't did have a lot of time, that. but the time that they did have, they took 100 percent of it and just made it theirs. If you listen to Stone Cold's podcast, he refers to something known as getting your stuff in. Yeah, which means like when you when you are in there, you do the things that you're you know, you've practiced, you've uh, set up the spots yeah. you want to hit. And I feel like all of them got their stuff in, even though, like you said, it wasn't a whole lot of time on it. Like, yeah. And everyone at some point left left the ring to like jump off of something. Yeah, which um, I thought was remarkable. Most of my notes. Roman. Yeah, most of my notes were just like the sequence of events in the match. I don't know if you guys took like more of like a like more insightful look of it. But we started the match. Uh, so it was the Viking Raiders, Alpha Academy, Street Profits, and Braun and Ricochet. They don't have a team yes. name yet. We started with Gable and Ricochet, and right off the bat, I need a feud with these two. These two have yes. such a good chemistry that was, together. That, that was such a like. I the the one note I did right was that I thought it was remarkable that they started with like the most technical <laughs> of the four teams. Yeah. They had them in the ring. And I thought that was really smart for pacing where they start like, you know, it's a technical chess match and yeah. then it goes it goes off the rails. Yeah, the then it had the brawl with all the teams. The Raider, Viking Raiders are in control of it. Braun takes out the Raiders after like standing behind them. They turn around. He takes them both out with like the double clothesline. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have Gable suplexing Braun. It's just showing that Gable is completely fucking underrated in WWE. The yeah. guy is they really incredibly be strong. Gable. That man is deadlifting Braun Strowman. He's deadlifting Braun yeah. Strowman with a rolling suplex. It's insane. He has Claudio strength. He does. He yeah, has he Claudio really strength. Does. Um, more tag hijinks ensue. We have Ivar doing a fucking moonsault. Then we have Braun doing a splash from the top rope. Which I is... think Ivar's been doing moonsaults like this, you know, going back to Ring of Honor in the Indies. So, I mean, yeah. that dude is really, really agile for how big he is. Yeah. And it's impressive. Uh, my my personal favorite spot was Strowman doing the Strowman Express or Express around. Yeah, he gets I'll, one rotation and he gets, and then then he gets, he gets laid out one. by Dawkins. It's <laughs> Angelo so Dawkins is, him. Uh, Angelo Dawkins just trucks him. Yeah, before uh, look, this is one of the things like everybody got their stuff in because right after mm -hmm. that splash, you have Otis slamming Braun, which is insane. Like, and then you have you have that picture have the, perfect shooting star press. You have the Tower of Doom. That, that they do takes in every everybody match. out, and then Braun yep. hypes up, goes around the ring, gets fucking laid out by Dawkins, and I'm like, it's so good. It's such a good impact to to the shoulder check. It really is. You Dawkins have everybody really set up. You have Ricochet hitting like a perfect shooting star from the fucking mm -hmm. rope to the outside. Like the man's landing on his feet from that height. It's insane. See, Ricochet uh, just couldn't let Vikingo do all the flips that weekend, so he just had to do something. Yeah, <laughs> truly. Then, and the finish comes when Ricochet goes for the moon, the moon salt, or the shooting star press. One of them uh, gets mm. caught by Dawkins with his knees up, and then gets splashed on between the knees by Montez Ford from the top rope and takes the pin. I thought profits. that was a unique finish. It was a really for... unique finish, catching Ricochet in the uh, shooting star He's press, and then catching getting him like a that. splash. But uh, Street Profits win, still getting their push and everything. I mean, they're a great fucking tag team right now. And uh, I only hope that they can start getting into more title pictures. Not just tag I, team, but individually also. I really I hope so, too. I read reports a while back that said that they that like they actually don't like mesh together like in real life. Yeah, I hear they have uh, issues like uh, between each other, but they are professional enough to go out there and do the matches that they sure. need to do. But there have yeah. been talk that they want to eventually split them up so they can each... Uh, go their own way. I mean, Tez, you're looking at a world champion down the line. For sure. Like, he has everything. And Dawkins would fit well as, you know, a U.S. or an intercontinental champion. But Tez, Tez has everything. He really does. Montez Ford is, I think, ready. 
Yeah, I he think should... if they ever split the titles, I think he's he's ready. If I not, think he's worth... right into the world picture, he's definitely deserving of going against Theory for the U.S. At least, yeah. Right Montez Ford's one of the more charismatic characters in WWE, and he is. like I said, I think he's he's starting to get to the point where the crowd is just starting to catch on to just how good he is, you know. Yeah. So eventually, I can see a United States title run with him, or an Intercontinental title run eventually down the road for Montez. I think his performance in the Elimination Chamber is what really opened my yeah. eyes. Like mm-hmm. that man was insane. It's like when Kofi had that, um, when he had that uh, gauntlet match a couple years back that led him uh-huh. to WrestleMania. That's what I'm getting from Montez right there, where he just goes out and just does these amazing performances, and he's starting to catch fire. So I think now's the time where I think we'll see him, you know, with a title at some point this year. Definitely. I mean, he deserves it. The guy is naturally talented, charismatic. I mean, you the visual of... Bianca and him both having titles would be fantastic. You know, sure. it's like there's the total package in Montez to just be one of their, you know, next generation like top guys. And um, then uh the other thing that we didn't talk we haven't talked about yet in this match, it featured Titus O'Neil, our boy, on commentary. They, they got Titus on commentary. I didn't really make a lot of notes for that, but I did love his commentary. I'm I'm glad that we're seeing Titus in some capacity. The guy is funny. Like he has such like he's a good hearted guy and he just has he's so funny comedy. at times. We'll, we'll, we'll get more into that in the next match he does commentary on, but I really liked it. Um he really popped off when Angelo Dawkins trucked. Braun Strowman. I thought that was funny. Yeah, and I mean, Dawkins, like, just... I mean, Braun sold that so good, too. Like, just he did. Getting, like, it, like, it's just like, okay, I'm gonna sell for this guy to just show how strong Dawkins can be. Like, mm-hmm. it... You know, I, I don't know how I feel about Ricochet being the one to take the pin. He is over with the crowd, but I feel like it could, probably could have been one of the Viking Raiders taking the pin. To, but, I mean, Ricochet is just that guy, I guess, in these mm-hmm. matches. He'll go out, he'll do all his stuff. One of those guys. He'll go out, he'll do his stuff, he'll be on top of the world, and then he'll usually be the one taking the pin. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was the first match of the weekend where I felt like, okay, this is definitely booked by trips. Like, it, yeah. this didn't feel like a Vince match at all. This definitely felt like an NXT match of some of some kind. And I really like how most of night one was like very NXT takeover vibe. I think X mentioned that in our discord chat. Yeah, it, like, it felt completely like a takeover. Every match was like well booked and clean. Like you guys were point at pointed out. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I, I don't really, I don't really know how to explain. We'll go into it later on, but it just felt to me like they put some time and some thought into putting all these matches together. It felt like and everything was booked showed. intelligently. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, Hey, we have structured the match. Here's our winner. Go out there. You have this amount of time. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm going to trust you guys to call this on the fly, but we have a time limit. Here's what we're going to do, and we're not going to have any kind of shenanigans. So, yeah. And that was the thing. Night one was mostly clean finishes for the most part. It was actually pretty impressive. We say with the the match we just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, theory, like he... Because the thing is, John's not going to come back for a title picture, for a title run. So, I mean, the only way for that match to end is it, if you don't want John to lose clean, it is going to have a dirty finish. And, I mean, there were a lot of rough bumps in some of these matches. And I think that's something that probably needs to change because you can probably book these matches better without a ref bump. But it's wrestling, so. Yeah. Um, Going into the third match of night one, it's the Seth versus Logan match, which again, hammers home how much I fucking hate how good Logan Paul is. But it also had an incredibly funny moment, which we're going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and what did y'all so what, what's up? What did you guys think of Logan Paul, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 12 injuries? Logan, uh, Paul, Logan Paul is his whole wrestling persona is he is the make a character in a wrestling game. <laughs> the creator wrestler, yeah. He does not do anything original. He uses everybody no. else's move sets and he uses everybody else's intros. You know, like, it, it really does seem like, but he just did it in such an obnoxious way. Dude. It's really yes, great, at, he's but it's really great co- at the same time. He's frustratingly cocky and it, yeah. it uh, just works. And I hate that it works because I hate Logan Paul as a person. <laughs> What? There's something, there's something so petty about like him doing a buckshot lariat and calling it a maverick lariat. 
It's oh, oh my god. god. Yeah, so it's so good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to he does the Shawn Michaels entrance. There is a masked prime <clears throat> mascot at ringside. And the first thought in my mind, I think I messaged it in the Discord, but I also looked at my buddy Josh, who I was watching with, and I'm like, this is fucking Jake Paul, isn't it? Jake Paul's in the, I'm, I'm like, See, I'm instantly like, that's Jake, what I thought Jake Paul's first. in this fucking costume, and then they completely swerved us, and it's a great swerve. Yep. Um, it was. Seth comes out wearing some of Becky's clothing. He has a conductor yeah. and like a symphony. Uh, I can't I made explain what Seth wore. I can't explain what Seth wore. I just know it was just red. That was it. It was, it was red. red. It had inflatable like padding. It was fucking weird. <laughs> like so yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, he was wearing parachute pants to the ring or some shit. Yeah. It's like uh, he wore that two months too late because it was past Valentine's Day. So, yeah, it felt like I a mean, Valentine's Day outfit. It's just yeah. really late. Uh, my notes here. I hate Seth. I hate uh, Logan Paul skills. Uh, he locks in one of Antonio Anoki's submissions. Uh -huh. onto Rollins and Logan Paul's actually given control of this match a lot which is wild like Seth is on the defensive for a lot of this match not only does he lock in one of Inoki's moves he does it he doesn't go to sleep yeah uh there is a, a slap fight into uh Logan Paul doing the gut wrench suplex onto Rollins mm -hmm. uh he jumps to the top rope into a clean moonsault, which pissed me off. <laughs> like, <laughs> the man just, You're going like, to get a lot of that in this it, one. He just, like, he just jumps, lands on the top rope, and then transitions into a moonsault like it's fucking nothing. And I'm like... Uh -huh. like the kid's super athletic, man. I uh, mean, I mean, I respect it. That dude. Uh, I think Rollins then hits him with the triple suicide dive. Yeah. And, uh... Stomp, stomp hand on to the steps. There's a bunch of pinning reversals. Uh, Logan Paul hits him with the punch. It's a two count. The stomp turns into a power bomb, which was awesome. I think Logan Paul went for the stomp and Seth Rollins just lifted him into a, just a straight power bomb, which was a pretty cool mm -hmm. transition. Then it's, it felt like a very Ring of Honor match. This did feel like a very. It felt like we were seeing Tyler Black come back a yeah. little bit, and um. Then we get the greatest reveal, I think, of this weekend, where the Prime pulls off the mask and it's fucking KSI. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I lost my shit on the couch. I was laughing I did, so I was hard. Like, what? <laughs> I was like, what in the hell? The reveal is so funny because he's just like doing this like goofy ass smile and he's like looking at the crowd doing the like, it was me all along. <laughs> Like energy. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. KSI was in his villain moment right there. He just took advantage of that whole reveal. I loved it. So for for me, who is fully old as hell and doesn't know what the hell any of that is, so that was KSI. He's just another one of the content creators that falls into like the circle that Jake Paul and Logan Paul kind of fill mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to right. demographics. And sometimes I thought so. I, I thought so. I just ever, wanted to make sure. Have you ever seen? The grapefruit video. No. The grapefruit blowjob Go video. No, I on haven't. YouTube of the, inst the instructional video. That's KSI. That was his rise okay. of fame. Oh. It I is, guess I have homework. It is hilarious. His reactions to it are just hilarious. It's it's one of those videos where it's like just the sound of the video and his fucking reaction to it is great. That's today's internet history lesson. Look up uh things like Angel's grapefruit video or something like that. <laughs> I. I guess I'll look that up later. Uh, um, anyway, uh, that table on, spot was great too. Like getting getting to pull KSI get, onto you know, it and then having him take the frog real splash. Mean like that, yeah. Uh, a pedigree, I think from Raw. I didn't put who did. I think a pedigree from Rollins gets a two count. The uh -huh. GTS into a frog splash gets a two count. Uh, he goes for a coast to coast and gets taken out by a super kick. Uh, which then like leads it, to the stomp. That's a stomp, and then Rollins picks up the win. Good WrestleMania finish. Didn't uh, expect Rollins to pick up the win. I'm not going to lie. Neither did I. I also did not expect Logan to take a super kick while doing a coast to coast. So this match just surprised me. And my final note here, great match. I still hate Logan Paul. <laughs> like, <laughs> that guy's uh, a troll. I, I will say for the go to sleep in particular, somewhere CM Punk hates it. And be, somewhere probably because CM Punk hates it, Kenta loves it. Yeah. it. I think he because I think the purpose of that was for him to troll CM Punk doing that. So. That's saying, really he's, just a, he he's just a creator wrestler. He he's just like grabs move sets. <laughs> like that's it. Yep. Um when you yeah, think about I, it that way, it makes sense. I hated this I, match. I hate Logan Paul. I hated that this match was good. 
Like, I hated that as a match was actually one of, like, fucking Seth Rollins' better matches in recent months also. It's like, God, I just... And he just I, signed another contract. He's extended his WWE contract. So yeah, we're going to be did. seeing more of him. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Just God damn I, it. Well, they're also going to be they're also going to be in Puerto Rico for Backlash, WrestleMania Backlash. So he's he's that's where he has property. They're going to be at it at his house, practically. Yeah, it's just. Um, but God, it's... I I thought it was like you guys said, he has to create a wrestler move set where um uh but i thought i thought it was a good match i I didn't think it was i think i think logan paul is a performer and not a wrestler um yes, I, said is... this, I said this last time you bring him in every couple months but he can't he can't do a full-time schedule he is the definition of a sports entertainer mm-hmm. like he is almost he is like that perfectly cut out version of what that term means like yeah he probably can't wrestle you know seven days a week like a bunch of wrestlers can but it's like oh i'm gonna show up for the pay-per-view and put on a banger of a match you got it <laughs> like he's like a twink brock lesnar oh god <laughs> it's basically him you know doing the undertaker type spot where he just comes in every once in a while you know just has this kind of match and then he just disappears he's you doing know, the he's uh like, he's doing the cena yeah he's yeah. he's, he's, he's yeah. basically the part-timer role like brock cena you know now roman they know. have quite a few part-timers on roster nowadays mm-hmm. yeah and uh i don't know what this match got i think this match got like a four and a half from Meltzer. i know he put out his ratings and everything mm-hmm. we got two five-star matches this weekend and they were the two that absolutely fucking deserved it um, that, that's all that really matters to me all yeah. i don't i don't really subscribe to Meltzer's ratings i think he's kind I. Of a... I think he's he's kind of just one of the uh, he's just one of those guys now in the like industry you know, you just take out take what he says with a grain of salt, really. Yeah, for sure. Uh, then we go to the fourth match of the night, which is our women's tag team match, which they still have the belts, but it doesn't. It's not a title match. And I'm like, are you just going to keep the titles on Lita, who's not always there either? It It's a very weird position for these women's tag matches, uh, tag team championships to be in. I think at the same time, uh, like they've already given the belts to damage control before. So what are they going to do? What else are they going to do with the belts? Yeah. Uh, so you're kind of in a, you're kind of in a lose lose position with this. Uh, so I think I think it's smart to have the match to feature the champions on the card, yeah. but not have the titles on the line because either damage control looks weak uh, because they they lose, which is what they end up doing anyway, yeah. or they win and it's like okay well we've seen this already yeah you know um maybe it's just time that you know damage control just comes to an end you know i think we're reaching that point with damage control where you know they're being featured in matches but you know they're losing all the time and and it's just not it's just getting to the point where it's time for it to end okay and just break them up you know let dakota kai be a heel and let eo be a face like i know she can be like she was in nxt Mm -hmm. And uh, and let's just start from scratch, and then we'll just you know keep Bailey wherever Bailey is right now. Bailey does whatever Bailey wants. Yeah. yeah. So let me just run down this match real quick. Uh, damage control. They get the jobber, uh, ish entrance. It's their music. They just come down to the ring, and then Lena, Trish, and Becky get a whole Sin City style intro. Where it's I remember, like, uh, here's I Becky's backstory. Was like, <laughs> like. <laughs> I remember on when it was happening, I was like, oh, no, not the Sin City entrance. And then I was like, wait, and then they come in black and white. I was like, wait, I was joking. What the fuck? Yeah, they get a whole like camera filter, a lowered frame rate from the looks of it. Mm-hmm. Like they're moving at like 24 frames, kind of almost looking Spider-Verse like. And like the rain effect. The rain mm-hmm. effect. Uh, Made a note here. Uh, Trish looks great. For her. Right. <laughs> and she's coming out in the outfit. I think she wrestled uh, Mickey James in during that match. Um- a version of it. A version of it. Uh, you have your standard brawl. We start with Kai and Becky. Becky goes into the corner, takes the abuse. Uh, then something weird happens. It She tags Trish, but it doesn't seem like the tag connects and Trish still comes in. And I was like, I made a note about that because it seemed it was so obvious to me. I was like, did she tag Trish or did she tag Lita because Trish went into the ring? I was like, that's that's weird. And it was noticeable enough that I made a note about it. I'm like, I don't think that's a legal tag. <laughs> ah. 
and the ref uh, saw it it happened and then lita gets tagged in damage control kind of on the defensive damage control gets back the double did anybody, ddt from lita did anybody catch lita doing like la knight's finisher you know the oh the whole um it was called the bft i think where you, you know you just kind of hold your opponent's head right here like slam towards the mat oh i don't know yeah. if any of y'all caught that or not um, I, I didn't really catch that, but when you say that in retrospect, I was like, oh, okay, well. Because yeah, that, that kind of happened. Lita was kind of busting out some new offense during this match. Yeah. You know. After that double DDT, uh, Trish goes to take out Bailey, but I feel like Bailey wasn't in position. You see Trish kind of hesitate before making the move across the ring as, mm -hmm. like, Bailey's getting into position. Yeah, so a little... Yeah, like, Bailey was scooting a little bit towards the... Um, yeah, she was trying to get like to her feet like in the corner and Trish yeah. had to like stop her movement for a second to ensure that she got there. It, it wasn't the cleanest match, but I guess it did what it was supposed to do. Uh Trish it, takes it out definitely... Kai. Uh Trish takes out Kai and then Becky and Bailey are definitely I made a note here. Becky and Bailey feel like a new era Trish and Lita in terms of their rivalry. Like they could just do this forever and I would get behind it, just them as two people. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, there was also one spot in this match where, like, Becky hit a baseball slide on Dakota, and Dakota just, like, gets launched right into the announce table. It, it looked really brutal. Like, she hit her head on the announce table, like, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. EO does her moonsault. She just does it perfectly. She's the She has the best moonsault in fucking wrestling, it feels like. Yep. Uh, She doesn't even look. Like, we made a note about that, too. Like, she just gets up there and does it. She just hopes you're in position, because she doesn't it's check like to see if you're in position. <laughs> He's either going to hit perfectly or clip you in the head, and that's your fault. Or is she uh, going to clip herself in the head? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Lita does a moonsault, hitting Kai and Io, and then Becky slams from the middle rope. Bailey takes the pin. So, it was a good, it was a good match. It definitely had moments where I was like, uh, maybe a little, uh, a little sloppy at times. Uh, uh, tr I, I think Trish is just a product of her time. Yeah, it definitely uh, felt like Lita and Trish were the ones that were. Uh, they definitely the dragged most. the match down. Yeah. Uh, I I thought I thought it was a, I thought it was a uh, I thought it was an okay match. It was it was it was to bring the crowd down because they're about to be built back up. Yeah. Between with the next match on, it's just it, it was a cool off pedal to the metal. Yeah. yeah with you know. the next, we had three schedule matches. When the next four matches, the crowd's red hot throughout the rest of the fucking night. It's insane. Um, yeah, I this was definitely the weakest match for me uh, in terms of overall. Like, I knew the theory match was probably going to be screwy, but in terms of actual like full time match uh, setup, this was definitely mm -hmm. the weakest because it did feel like Trish and Lita kind of couldn't keep up with the newer uh, generation. Yeah, but I won't put it too much on them. I mean, it, it right. They are a product of their time. The, these new generation of women are wrestling like bended back in Trish and Lita's time where they're actually fucking pummeling each other a lot more. Yeah, they, these women are just stronger and faster and they're more fast paced. OK, yeah. and uh, I guess Lita and Trish, you know, they're pushing they, they're pushing 50 and it, it's understandable. I get it. They still look okay. great. It, it yeah. still look good, though. But like I said, they were a product of their time and uh. You know, they were just having trouble keeping up with these, you know, younger, stronger, faster women, you know. Yeah, and it was a good match. Definitely the weakest, though. Uh, I mean, the women did what they do best. And I mean, the right team got the win. There was no scurry finish. So mm -hmm. champions still look like champions, uh, even though it's not saying a lot with this condition that the titles are in. Yeah. Then we get to the match that I think everybody was curious about because we didn't know what this was going to be like, but this was probably the more entertaining match. Like all the matches were good, but this was more of the more entertaining because you wanted to see Dom get beat by his dad. Michael Cole was dragging him in, in fucking commentary. Yeah. Uh, we Man, Michael Cole was just on fire that whole night one. Michael he really was, was loving WrestleMania without Vince yeah. there. Like he was <laughs> loving this. Truly. Um, so we get the prison dom entrance. They pull him in with the county jail truck. Uh, I made a note that he's it wearing Ray's original mask, but it looks darker. Like yeah. the original purple mask. Mm -hmm. Ray comes out to a huge pop with Eddie's music and the low rider Snoop Dogg by his side. 
Uh, I made it. This is the serial sponsored serial sponsored match. I, I, the- I do. I would do want to come back to that because I, I think, yes, it's sponsored. I'm pretty sure Prime Energy sponsored the Logan Paul match. Probably. But like, I, I think it's really smart for them to not get in. I think they learned their lesson from the Mountain Dew match that killed Bray Wyatt's push. Yeah. Um. It has it's a typical great. slow start to these kind of matches, but I mean, the crowd is red hot for Ray. Uh, yeah. Dom misses him with a shoulder charge into the turnbuckle, and Ray beats him with a belt, which made the crowd pop huge. I popped on the couch when I was watching it. It was just so I funny. Like, I got a kick out of it. I really did. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment where Dom throws a drink on his sister. His sister just sells it great, too. Um, I want to talk about that real quick, uh, because immediately as it happened, I drew parallels to MJF doing it. And the way this works, this is the difference between WWE and AEW. Is AEW loves to blur that line of like, this is real, this is not real. In WWE, when they do that, they're, it, it's a plant. They know who it is. You know, it's probably it's probably rehearsed a few times. Yeah. Uh, the reaction that they want to have. And it still gives the same reaction as the MJF thing. And I think I think this is one of the few things that I think I like when WWE does better than AEW is when they do stuff like this It's because they have rehearsed this to death and it looks good. And it isn't you don't have to come onto the press, the press like. Oh, me and MJF had a really serious talk, and there are there are fines going to be involved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's all I want to say about that. Yeah, it yeah. just comes off really natural without being, you know, too over the top. You know, they pretty much plan that spot, so it does have the same effect. But you're not, you know, you're not, you know, pissing people off, and you know, everybody yeah. knows what's going on. So, and you they don't know have that's to, Mysterio's family. You don't want, and you don't have to give someone like a year's worth of free tickets to their shows now. Yeah. Right. Uh, he throws a drink on his sister, takes advantage of the situation when Ray is distracted, uh, and then mm. his mom slaps him, which got good. the crowd to pop. <laughs> uh, then Ray drives him into a corner, taking control. There's some momentum back and forth. Judgment Day arrives on the outside. Ray takes a horrible bump, which yeah. I don't know like if this was a thing that they had practiced, but Dom looks like he's doing like a flip to him. Ray flips mm-hmm. over and hits his face on the bottom turnbuckle. Yep. And there was a second where I'm like, Ray's out. Like he's knocked the fuck out. Like this match is over. Like this is, they're going to, because oh. Ray, he didn't have his hands up. He just lets his face just nail that bottom turnbuckle. Yeah. It looked brutal. It uh, did. One of the other, one of the other notes I had was bad Bunny was on commentary because that becomes important in a little bit. It does. Uh, that mm-hmm. is the thing they do show that bad bunnies on the Spanish commentary team uh, for mm-hmm. this match. Uh, 619, you get the Judgment Day interfering, and then Latino World Order shows up to even it out. Uh, Dom hits the 619 in a frog splash. Ray kicks out. Crowd goes fucking nuts. Uh, He tries to disconnect the uh, turnbuckle, and Damian Priest goes in for a hit him with a chain, but Bad Bunny takes the chain. Crowd pops for that, too. Ray hits the 619 into a frog splash and gets the win over his son. And Really good interference in this match. The mm. it didn't overstay its welcome, and once it st- once everything started, the newly formed Latino World Order showed up and took it out. So it made it back mm. to Ray and Dom. Bad Bunny got involved and stopped Damian Priest, and then got put through a table on Monday because of yep. that. That was that was actually that that table spot was dope as hell. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, uh, and the reason I, I, I will all say. The, they're doing all this bad bunny stuff too because he i think he is going to be like one of the main players uh at the puerto rico he's the, show he's the host he's the he's host, the host at, yeah at, so yeah. they're getting every they're getting him involved now to do all that but i love this match this was just one of those matches that felt like an old school just attitude era style match mm-hmm. where it's like oh i'm this, gonna beat my son in this match <laughs> i so for my my notes i uh this this match for me is 18 years coming this is yes. ever since, ever since uh, Rey Mysterio got the custody of Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> this was going to happen. <laughs> I was waiting for the, you're not my real dad. Wait, was that a phone? Yeah. Hey, that was a ladder match, right? When had yeah. yeah, it was a, that was a ladder match. Dominic, yeah. yeah, they had the custody papers in the briefcase. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> but I'm like, uh, they're just, I'm like, God, I just kind of really wish Eddie was still here. Cause I felt like that would have added so much to like this whole storyline. I, I think really would have. 
so uh one of my other notes was like i don't usually because the reports after after that happened after that match happened were like uh the dom the dom uh, the the ray eddie match the reports after that were like hey dom is kind of fucked yeah like there was a lot of reports that he had like severe mental mental trauma from it uh, because, you know, he's like eight years old and can't discern, hey, this is real, this is not real. Yeah, you kind of threw an eight-year-old kid into a thing and it's like, I don't know who my real dad is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I have strong opinions about bringing your family into it, even if they may be keyed into the business. It's very obvious Dominic wasn't at the time. Yeah, uh, I mean, as he but, gets older, he probably says like, hey, it, this is all story. Yeah, it's fake. You know, here we go. We can, and then older Dom's probably like, we can keep playing on it. Yeah, because he knows now. But yeah, I think for probably what four or five years, maybe that kid might. Be I think a for bit a fucked few up. years he was <laughs> like, he was uh, not there. Um, uh, but I I did really like this match. I think it went on just a little too long. Uh, it did for my liking. Um, I th- it did go probably a few minutes longer than it needed to, especially with the whole like back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff, but it was a good finish to have Damian Priest be interrupted by Bad Bunny, and then have Ray get a clean win. Yep. Uh, afterwards, uh, I think I think not, that whole Damian Priest Bad Bunny dynamic kind of plays into you know their friendship and the tag. And I think that match where they, they tagged it last year. Yeah, they're friends. And Morrison. Oh yeah, yeah, they're friends. Yeah, so they're friends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. So I must have missed that. Uh. A year, a year changes the person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They went from uh, tag partners to enemies. Yep. And this was our first of many uh, Judgment Day losses over the weekend. But the next match the next is our w. first big W, which I feel if we didn't have Vince writing Monday, might have been built upon a little bit. Uh, we get the Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley match. And right off the bat, Charlotte has one too many surgeries. It is noticeable on the face. And I it is noticeable enough that it actually made me take a note of that. I'm like, it looks like she's wearing a, a wax mask. It was actually like, I didn't even know that it was Charlotte when she came out. I thought it was somebody else. It's. It's not good. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. Uh, don't like Charlotte as a person. I, I think she is. There's like, a lot of nepoti- at, there's a lot of nepotism. Yes, she's. And I, in, I, I feel like she's in her position because of Rick. A lot, yeah, for sure. Uh, I she's think also, she's. I think she's earned her position because she is a very she's a very good wrestler. Yes, but I think she has gotten a few too many pushes for my liking, and I think she's a terrible person. She she came back and was like, "Hey, Ronda, let's have a match," and then like the same night she came back, took the belt off of her, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I feel like this is back this is backroom politic, like kicking in. Uh, I also yeah. noted that she was heavily spray tanned because you actually see it on the steps later in the night when she's thrown against them, it comes off of her, and stains yeah. the steps. Like, see, it's... See, but the, see, the thing is, though, despite all that, I really don't have that much of an issue with Charlotte Flair, just as long as, you know, she's not, they're not overdoing it. Like, for a while, they were overdoing her being pushed a lot. She yeah. was winning title after title, and then that's like, like she was winning matches in this division. But she was beating people that had, like, all the fire behind them just because they wanted yeah. to keep the title on her. Like, but I think the, the but... first time her and Rhea went against each other, Rhea should have taken that win. You would have built a younger star right there. It's yeah, just... and it, well, and that is true. But at the same time, like you gotta understand, a lot of people were not happy with that Ronda Rousey title one. No, all right, nobody everybody was. was fed up with it to the point where it's like, oh, Charlotte's back. Yo, oh, she just took the title off of Ronda. Man, like, we because don't care. Ronda, hey. Ronda took that off of Liv, who everybody was behind. Liv right? Morgan was doing really good. Yeah, she was really good. Like, Crowd was behind her. Vivian. And then it's just like, oh, we're putting the belt on Ronda, and then we're taking the belt off Ronda. So, mm. uh, oh, we fucked up. I also noticed that maybe it's just something backstage, but Ronda, uh, Charlotte looked really disinterested in this match for most of it. Like, I felt like she was just out there doing 
what she needed to do. She didn't feel like it looked like she didn't feel like she wanted to be there. That might just been me like reading into like everything too much though. But there was, was a weird on, energy to her about that. Was she on Raw or SmackDown this week? Don't no. think so. I no, think after Mania so she was taking a break. I think that's what yeah. like the report okay. said. Um Yeah, I have a lot of notes from here. Uh probably not gonna uh, go over all of them. It's your I definitely I thought it was a What's up? I thought it was I thought it was a real I thought the match itself, like I said, all of that about my personal dislike of Charlotte Flair as a person, put that over here. Uh, she's a great wrestler. The match was good. They worked Charlotte's head the entire match. Like like you said, hitting hitting it on the on the steps. Yeah. And then and all of the all, all of those other spots. The really nasty one where like this there was a suplex where I want to talk hits about the head. suplex. <laughs> Uh, there was two things where I think Charlotte over rotated just slightly. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There's also five two counts in this match. As I made a note about that, also. Okay. Um, there, yeah, she's on the rope. I think they're going for like an avalanche, uh, suplex, and Charlotte just completely flips herself so she lands face down, like mm. face and chest down from the middle rope, which was a great bump, but I still felt like that seemed a little bit dangerous. Uh, then they did bit. the German suplex where Charlotte like completely over rotated and a second and or two on face. landed right on her face and a second or two more was landing right on her neck. Like yeah. it was a very dangerous rotation for Charlotte to try to do it from that height. And it the was funny part was they crazy. replayed that suplex like three times. It is, it Charlotte was just getting face planted three <laughs> times from that suplex. The rotation is just fast enough that she doesn't land square on top of her head coming down. And it looks like she lands more on her face and her knees than the rest of her body. But her face hits the mat before her body does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked uh, you see, you can visibly see like marks on her face. Like she had a red like a a mark right here on her nose. Yeah, you see the rest of the match. She's like slightly bleeding on the bridge of her nose because she probably smacked her face on the fucking mat. <laughs> like, she got, what it was, what it what happens with that is you, it's like road rash is, is what happened because she hit her face a few times. Yeah. Uh, uh, including including the last spot where uh, where um, she hits her head on the on, on top the post. of the ring post. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. she just goes flat. Yeah, she moves out of the way. She, they're on top. She moves out of the way, pulls her down. Charlotte hits her face on the top of the ring post. And then we hit an avalanche riptide into the pin. Yep. But throughout this match, I mean, you have submission escapes. You have finisher counters. You have a ref bump from Rhea being transitioned into a spear. The they keep calling it the figure four, which I which I was confused because I thought hers was the figure eight. So was, the figure four is when she does the figure four lock and then she does a bridges. bridge and that's the figure eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so what they'll say what they'll say is oh she's got the figure four and then she they'll be like oh she she needs the bridge to put in the figure eight. Okay. So yeah I was really confused so they kept calling it figure four and I'm like that's not her version is it? Mm -hmm. Um there was a point near the end of this match where Charlotte obviously has no idea how to put Rhea away. Like she's tried everything and you can see it on her face. Like she has no idea how to beat this woman. Yeah. And it's just a really good, like in ring storytelling. Uh, after Rhea is crowned champion, I feel like they still focus on Charlotte too much. Post match. Yeah, they just, yeah um, cause they showed a pic, they showed, they went to a shot of Charlotte and she was like, you know, smiling, looking up on Rhea as if to say, ah, you got me, kid. I can so understand like, if that's like the Becky thing with Bianca where it's like smiling at like, great, you, it's your turn now, you know, like it's yeah. the passing of the torch. But like they had the camera more on Charlotte than Rhea with the title at the end of that match. I think I think that I think they tried to do something like that with Charlotte and Rhea is like, oh, it's your turn now, kid. But it's like you should still give it to Rhea more, but the camera was way more sure. focused on Charlotte. And I'm like, that feels weird. Like I, I will say they made up for that with all of Triple H like summoning Rhea, like, here's Rhea Ripley for like two days straight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so yeah, we're in the Rhea era now. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see the dynamic of Judgment Day. Maybe they all are gonna have to start answering to mommy Rhea since she has gold and the rest of them lost all their matches. Yeah, I think Rhea is now going to be a, a nice little leader to this group, which will be fun. Which I already thought she was a leader of this group to get, begin with until they had to point out that Finn was actually the leader. And, and we'll we will get, into him we'll a little get bit to on. Finn because 
there's it's, holy shit that's a weird match for me but we'll talk about that one too mm -hmm. uh we are going into our main event but surprise it's not wrestlemania without a surprise return and we get pat mcafee coming back hell which yeah the uh, the crowd popped michael cole went fucking nuts michael cole went feral and then we have a fun little match with uh, pat mcafee versus the miz and pat mcafee yeah. picks up the win it was just one of those impromptu kind of things uh it was, I like, really, it was I one of those it. like let's yeah, it was one of those like let's let's you know put some time in here yeah, i enjoyed it i mean it's the it was, first of two returns that miz will have over the weekend yeah. and we'll talk about that second one <laughs> it's just uh but yeah seeing pat mcafee back at Ma at mania fantastic like, i love pat mcafee I, he's great i have a note i have a note here that for for as 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 unhinged as michael cole went uh, Corey Graves went the other way, and I thought that Corey was really Graves, funny. Corey Graves and Michael Cole having their freedom to be commentary now are doing face and heel commentator so well. Like, it's so natural between the two of them now. But we uh, get to our first, our main event of night one. Mm -hmm. The story coming to an end that we wanted to see. They have the Usos come out first because they know the crowd's going to react better to KO and Sammy. Yep. And this arena is hot for Sammy. Like, they're happy for KO, but Sammy's music hit, and this arena goes crazy. Like, Sammy is definitely the star of this match going into this. It's your it's... very standard tag team match. I mean, Sammy takes most of the abuse of this match, though. Like, he is yeah. in the ring by himself. He is taking super kicks. I think there was uh, 15 super kicks in about 30 seconds in this match. Yeah, that was quite the super kick party. It, it's um, really, it's really odd that people criticize the young bucks for throwing too many super kicks, but the Usos throw do just as thing. many super kicks in a match. You know, did the same thing. Like you yep. put those two together, I think ninety percent of those matches would be super kicks. I would love yep. to see it. Like that's thing. I want a unified wrestling world where I can just see the Usos versus the young bucks just at an event because that's just how wrestling works. Like, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Sammy taking a lot of the abuse i mean this is like a whole paragraph of my fucking notes here uh counters frog splashes two counts two counts two counts more super kicks uh there was a really cool camera shot this match of when sammy was in the ring taking the super kicks the camera guy like rotated around the ring like he yeah. walked from one side past the turnbuckle like doing like a like rotating shot of sammy taking these super kicks it, it was like I a thought that was just really that was a really cool bit of camera work they did for this match. Um, I wish they would do something like that a lot more often during the regular shows because I mean it's been a lot better than you know the shaky camera you know where they're just like every time somebody gets hit they're just moving the damn camera back and forth. You know it it, it makes me nauseous. It yeah. does. I have, I have this a is note good that camera work. It was. Uh, I have a note that says there was a point where Sammy and Ko did the Haluva kick to, and stunner to the Usos. And it looked that was going to be the end of the match, but it's like, nope, we got, we still got nine minutes, baby. Yeah. So I have this whole thing. I'm, I'm going to run down just like the list of actions that happened in this match. Um, okay. We start with Sammy and Jay. It's your typical head start or your headlock start like Roman and Sammy did. Oh, uh, Sammy takes Jay down. The Usos take control. Sammy gets taken out by a suicide dive and then suplex. Sammy takes abuse. KO t is taken out from ringside by a kick. And I noted that Sammy's selling in this match is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, he's just getting the shit kicked out of him, and he's looking like he's getting the shit kicked out of him. Uh, we get the KO hot tag. Crowd goes nuts. We have a stunner countered into a neck breaker. Swanton countered into knees into a frog splash. It's the first yep. of our many two counts. <laughs> Sammy does a brain buster to Jay on the apron. Which was an insane spot. Uh, well, a swanton that, that's from like KO his gets PWG two. spot. Yeah, and then a swanton yeah. from KO gets another two count. Uso splash onto Sammy for a two count. Blue mm -hmm. thunder bomb on Jimmy. Jay's the legal man. He gets uh, a two count on the pin. Super kick party from the Usos. It gets broken up. KO takes a super kick. More super kicks to the back of Sammy's head. Sammy kicks out. The rotating camera shot. Sammy takes two more super kicks. <laughs> like, <Jeez. laughs> I like made a note. But, um, Jimmy's held by KO while Jay goes for the pin. It's a 2.999. Like this was the closest fucking three count I've ever seen 
if X if Excalibur was doing commentary, it'd be like two point nine 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 and ad infinitum. Uh, KO goes through the announce table. They hit Sammy with a one D. Sammy kicks out. The crowd goes fucking crazy. Uh, we're back to Jay and Sammy. Uh, he hits him with the exploder suplex into the corner, and then his a uh, hell of a kick. KO mm. returns. We get another uh, kick in the corner on Jimmy. A stunner on Jay. Pop a power bombs to both of them. KO takes super kicks. Their typical back tag that they usually cool. do. Double yeah. Uso splash, another two count. Uh, there's another double super kick, and while they're in the corner, the camera picks up KO calling the moves slightly. Yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah. heard that. But I did hear yeah. that. You hear like, him. I in, think a, you hear him in the corner. Like, you hear him very faintly, like all right, him is like super kick, and that's when Jay goes back and hits him with the fucking super kick. Like some you, of these matches, they were calling spots way too loud, you know, for most of the night. The camera it was, was like right there. Yeah. It's crazy. I it was like it's because the crowd is so fucking loud that you have to be able to like communicate to 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 properly yeah. call spots. The camera was I even heard way I even heard some rep, I, I even heard some refs be like, hey, you know, wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. we'll get to a uh the second Miz match uh tomorrow because you they have video of the camera guy. Like calling shots to Snoop to to do stuff. Um, yeah. Then the finish of this match comes, where KO hits Jay with a top rope muscle buster, which was fucking wild to see. Yep. Uh. Then Sammy sets up Jay to hit him with three hell of a kicks in the corner, and Jay or Sammy pins Jay Uso in the middle of the ring, and we have new I undisputed tag team champions. I thought that was remarkable because like that was that was very much the the Revenge of the Sith where it's like you were the chosen one and he just whack whack. We made a whack. note. We're glad they didn't do the Shawn Michaels spot where like Sammy apologizes before taking him out. Like oh, no, this was this still is, this, this is was Sammy better. being like, no, you're that spot was you're more going like down. A, <laughs> I'm going to. He's, it was one. It was one one of those spots where Sammy just looks at Jey Uso and said. Just remember, I'm the one who did this to you. Thanks. Yes. Let him know, you know. it was let him tell let him know it was me. Tell him it was me. Tell him it was me. Tell Roman it was me. I mean, Jay sells these three kicks so fucking well too. Yeah. And like the crowd, the moment that second one hits and he goes for the third, the crowd is just crescendoing. Like they know that this is the end of this match. Mm -hmm. He hits them, he takes the pin. KO and Sammy are undisputed champions. And to end the night, the crowd goes fucking crazy. Uh, it earned its five stars. For sure. This, this was the perfect capstone to a story that just naturally built since April. It was wild. And I would this might this match was just good. Like this was mm. like this is gonna be one of those tag team matches that will be talked about in terms of like in ring storytelling. And they knew it had to be important because this is the first time a tag team match has ever made this event was WrestleMania. the first tag team match to wrestle to main event WrestleMania. And I think it was also the first tag team championship match on top of that, too. So, like, the first tag team match to main event is a title match. Yeah. And uh, well, they had TLC. TLC is worth for the for those titles. That's fair. So this was like the first traditional tag team match then. And sure. end of the night, the right team won. Yeah, which, yeah. Will not, will, was, which will unfortunately not be a trend going through the rest of this. <laughs> I, I, so as we get into night two, I want to say that the reports have come in that this it was has always been, the plan. This was always the plan. So this isn't like Vince coming in and being like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to change things up here last minute. It's just I understand that that was the plan, but like the storytelling and the response to it was just so correct. It was the time mm. to call an audible. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, night one ends on the highest of high notes. And it is just the conclusion of a long road with these two PWG and uh, Ring of Honor tag team the champions. And now the undisputed WWE. Uh, I don't uh, I I'm pretty sure you guys did. Did you guys end up watching the press, the press releases after? Uh, I, I did not. I only caught a little bit of it. That's it. I didn't catch too much of that. It was it was it was good. Uh, I know they I thought, thanked uh, Super Dragon and they talked about the Briscoes. They they and... shouted out Super Dragon in particular, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah. That was really the only noteworthy thing about that. 
but that, that was night one was fucking match. phenomenal. Like it was a phenomenal uh, night of wrestling. It was. And then we get to night two, <laughs> which I will say night two not, had great wrestling. It had great wrestling and it had one of the best matches in a long time. And but it definitely had some stinkers. <laughs> sure. Uh, it wasn't as good as night one. It was definitely not. They definitely top ended. They definitely top loaded night one. <laughs> Uh, but we start with night two with a crap with a match that I just did not care for at all. It was the Omos Brock versus Brock. Uh, I thought it was remarkable that they made Omos look strong for like most of the match. We made yeah. a note about that. Uh, Brock is really, really putting this guy over as a monster. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Because, like, for most of this little short match, Omos was just out there dominating Brock. And it's really weird to see Brock in an underdog position. Considering the fact that, you know, he's been this big, bad, intimidating beast in all of his previous matches, and now he's going up against a guy who's much bigger than him, you know, just absolutely, absolutely putting this guy over, doing the absolute most to make him look like a legitimate threat. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he does that too. We have two big spots in this match, uh, both from Brock. He Germans uh, almost, uh, I think with three. Uh, did a... Uh... Yeah, Brock hit, a couple the, of them. Brock hit the three German suplexes and is selling his back to kind of show like how heavy Omos is. And then he F5s Omos. Uh, which was insane. Yep. Um, what got me, though, is after that F5 in the pin, Omos is outside of the ring and standing back up. Yep. So it's like, oh, he doesn't know how to sell this, or it's like, oh, that didn't really phase oh, me no. as hard as you think that's, it did. That's how you build a monster, dude. Yeah, and Brock's leaving the ring still kind of selling his back uh, yeah. from this match. So it did what it's supposed to do. I think it kind of made almost look a little stronger uh, in a lot of people's eyes, but Brock still got the win. So I think it just kind of counters X that match think, a lot, too. I think this is like the almost the opposite of how uh, how we mentioned, like, no one's ever going to, like, look back at John Cena and and Austin Theory were like, oh, well, Austin Theory kicked him in the nuts, so obviously that win doesn't count. I yeah. think it's going to go the other way with these two because Brock is the part-timer. Yeah. And almost, almost is going to look, almost is going to come out looking much stronger even though he lost here. Yeah. I mean, X, did you have anything about this match or was this just kind of like that starting match for you where you just... It, this is just pretty much a standard... Y y this match really was what it was going to be. You know, mm. it was going to be a short five-minute battle of the Giants, you know, yeah, Omos was going to get in some offense. Brock was going to come back and win. You know, it was nothing of note. that I. That's why I didn't take as many notes during this match, because I already knew what this, is, what this yeah. was going to be. But, you know, it was very entertaining for those five to ten minutes that it was on. Yeah. So I will give it that. But I was, you know, sufficient, I was sufficiently it it was sports entertained. Yeah. Yeah, sufficiently sports entertained. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Just, uh, and then we go to the next match. Well, I'm going to get to that uh, just uh, right after yep. match number two of the night. Bobby Lashley shows up, doesn't elaborate, leaves. Shows like up that's... With, he shows up with the trophy. They just and have leaves. him show up with the uh, Andre the Giant trophy. I'm like, he shows up, shows off the trophy, and then leaves, doesn't elaborate. And then just leaves. That's, just, like, that's all we just... see about Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Could we have just so, done something with Bobby Lashley here? You know, so there's there's something you have to remember. Remember when they when people are on the show, they get much more money yes like even if you just walk up this was the trophy, everybody this was everybody getting their payday yes yeah uh then we go to the weaker of the two four team tag matches uh i have some thoughts about this one and i think my final line of notes here uh will indicate that when we get to it but my notes here uh live must love having tall girlfriends yep natalia not the kitty cat helmet <laughs> I, I, I want to say, uh, yeah, I want to say before we get before we get into this match, like proper, I want to pat all three of us on the back for getting the getting the teams just right as yeah. we were speculating on WrestleMania. Um, like, well, it yeah. was the the small and tall girlfriends. It was Natalia and partner. It was Shayna like, Baszler not, and Ronda. not doing something. Hey, hey Shotzi, you're Shotzi. not doing anything this weekend. Oh, you want to wrestle yeah. spot? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I have a note here. Uh, Chelsea Green looks very Alicia Fox coming out yeah. with the stuff yeah. so it was a very uh noticeable she, she look looked like she looked like a pastel poppy she's this, such a great yes. character. you know she's such a great character wrestler too because she just yes she comes up with these she comes up with these characters that are just fucking hilarious you know and ridiculous at the same time 
Mm -hmm. I will say, I think the purpose of this match, I think this match had one purpose and I think it did it well. This was Raquel's night to shine. Yes. Yeah. This match, I felt like it was made to make uh, Raquel Rodriguez look great. And she did. She did. She was probably the best performer in this whole match. Uh, there was a really cool spot. Uh, or actually, sorry. Uh, yeah, Chelsea Green goes to drop kicker. She no sells it, which mm -hmm. was pretty funny. Uh, fortunately, had to make a note here that Shotzi is not a good wrestler. Like, I feel like she's mm -hmm. she has very selective chemistry. If she's just in a match like this where she has to call the shots on the go, she's going to falter. Like, she can't do these unrehearsed matches, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, Raquel, yeah. I have a note here. Uh, Raquel throws Liv outside on everybody, which is a really cool spot. Or just chucking Liv outside of the ring. Very Braun Strowman ricochet. Yeah. Um... Natalia then uses Chelsea to beat up Sonya Deville, which was really funny. Uh, and then Ronda and Shayna come back into the match after being knocked out for most of it. They win, and the crowd audibly hates it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Natalia had a really good double sharpshooter spot. I thought, that I thought I the double sharpshooter was cool. Yeah, was, it's really it's cool. always a dope spot. Uh, yeah. One of the notes I had was that. The finish involved a limping Shayna Baszler breaking up the pin attempt from Liv while Ronda puts Shotzi in Piper's pit, which was a little random, but it seems like Shayna Baszler's hurt. Who knows? She doesn't yeah. have social media. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I made that note too. Ronda, Baszler oh, yeah. win, they submit Shotzi. So. Yep. It, the crowd audibly hated this finish. The crowd goes mild. The crowd wasn't even going mild. Like, there was, they audibly had to turn down the booze. Like it was yep, yeah. just a match that nobody cared for at the end of it. Yeah. The match people did fucking care for at the end of it, however, match. which I think is our agreed upon match of this whole fucking weekend. Correct. Uh, is the triple threat, the intercontinental championship triple threat. Oh uh, good. my God. This fucking match was this so was good. The best match of WrestleMania by far. <laughs> Titus, Titus O'Neil also on commentary. Titus O'Neil was fucking great this match. Because it's the first chop that Gunther made. He's like, call the police! Call the police! <laughs> that shit has me rolling. We can talk about this uh, as we go. I'm not, like that. <laughs> I'm not going to go through everything I have for this match because I want people to watch it. Uh, we will say that the finish to this match was fucking phenomenal. Because mm -hmm. we don't see Gunther for a long time, and the camera work is so good, we don't see him coming off the top rope to break off the pinfall, which was a really cool surprise. Uh, uh, there was the other the other thing I liked about commentary was uh, Drew did the like the diving the dive he does, yeah, and yeah. The, and the commentary was like and Michael Cole was They're like. Cool. Titus, you ever do that? You ever do that in your career? It's like, and you you never did that in your career. And it's like, and you never will see me do that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this this match is nuts. I mean, they take out Gunther first, and then most of this match is just Sheamus and McIntyre, which I think is a I mean, really good way to go about this match. I'm, I'm just going to say this. If you like really hard, if you really like European wrestling, where they just beat the shit out of not, each other. Not if, if, you, if you like New Japan Pro Wrestling, if you like this, those style of matches. This felt strong style. This is like, each other with the strong style matches. You will enjoy this match. I will tell you this right off the bat. The, the original note we had, the original note we had this about this match was big, meaty European men slapping each other for fifteen minutes, and that's exactly what we got. That was this my was uh, my note for it: uh, big men hitting big men. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I said this is pretty much an NJPW match on WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, this is Gunther's fifth five star match during his time with WWE, and he has the most. He has the most. Two with Ila Dragunov, one with Tyler Bate, two with Sheamus. Uh, and how long has he been with the company? He hasn't been with the company for. He's been with the company long. for three like years six now. Years. Six like years. Six years. Like Time's five, weird. Five, the, can, the pandemic kind of threw like my entire concept of time. Yeah. Off. So. Um. I remember Gotha chopping the shit out of Adam Cole in NXT. You know, yes. during that little crossover. So he's been in there that long. Uh, Gunther chops Sheamus. You hear it in the stadium, even with the crowd. Like he is just like gunshotting these chops on people. Uh, uh, it's so, so good. Another standing ovation for Sheamus after hitting Drew with the uh, 10, 10 blows of the bellum or whatever it's called. Yep. 
I the, really the standing ovation of the title. crowd. Like Seamus really is wish getting his flowers. Gave, yeah, I really wish that he gave him the title though. You know, I, I think it was time. I but think I think they're gonna drag it out a little bit longer. I think they need to drag it out a little longer just because I think Gunther needed this WrestleMania moment. If he yeah. loses after this, whatever. But he needed the, he needed his WrestleMania moment. But the other two had theirs already. I mean, I don't yes. even mind if they did the SummerSlam, but you know, at, at some point, Gunther's got to move up. Because he's sure. he's he's main event ready. I that man, that the, man is ready for a world a world title. If the Royal Rumble is anything. When Cody gets the belt, I feel like it's going to be him and Gunther first. Oh, oh exactly. Ooh, like, I would love that match. Yeah, just uh, but yeah, the finish of this match after a bunch of back and forth, uh, the pinfall is broken up by Gunther. He then power bombs Sheamus onto Drew, power bombs Drew and pins Drew for the win. Yep, which it was a. Such a good match. finish. Like this match is so fucking good. This was the most like it wasn't even like real. It wasn't even sports entertainment or like real technical wrestling. This was just like who can hit each other hardest. Uh, uh so yeah. Gunther's been with the WWE for four years and has five five star matches in oh, those okay. four years. So he the has key. more five star matches than he has years in the company. It's yeah. uh, his generation, like he's generational, like he's one of those yeah. generational talents. Uh, he will be, he will go down as one of the best intercontinental champions. Like hands For sure. down. Um, yeah. If you haven't watched this match, go fucking watch this match. Like we can talk about it all day, but like just seeing it is a different experience. Yeah. I mean, Seamus delivers a fucking top rope white noise to Gunther at some point in the fucking match it's wild and yeah this was just so good <laughs> like, it was it was every bit worth its five stars yeah it was and i would say that that match is where the night gets its highest point i feel like everything down here while not like a sudden drop off like with the women's title match and everything it's like you have the do you have this match then you have the women's title match and then you see this like sudden drop off at the hell in a cell like I, I we'll get to the women's match and, and I, I'm going to say this is this is my favorite for the weekend. I want to say the next match is my favorite for this day. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I loved this uh, women's title match, um, yep. but my yeah, match Baylor, week, Oscar. I love the finish to KO and Sammy. And in terms of a storyline is my best storyline finish. Yes. But in terms of just like a wrestling match, I would go back and watch. It's fucking this one. Like, it's the Gunther, Sheamus, Drew match. Like, this match just is hands down one of the best matches WWE has put on in a long time. And fucking Abyss produced it. Like, Wait, Abyss really? produced this match? Yeah, they released it. Really? Abyss produced this match. Like, yeah, that fucking got a promotion. But then, I, didn't yeah, know he was, I didn't know he was doing promote. I didn't, do, I didn't know a, he was producing. He, he is a producer oh, yeah, for WWE because they took a look. Was. They took a look at his feuds with like AJ Styles and Kurt Angle and TNA and like he's producing these matches. As a matter of fact, I think a couple years back, he did pop up on WWE television as like AJ Styles uh, lawyer or something. He did. Yes, it was. uh, That's actually funny. It was funny. It was uh, during AJ's like title reign, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, Yeah. Abyss produced the Intercontinental match. uh, And Jason Jordan. And Adam Pierce produced the Brock Lesnar almost match. Okay. Um, they, they just tried to get the best they could out of those two. Michael Hayes produced the Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes match. Well, ah, that checks out. Yeah, I feel like that kind of checks out. Uh, but there's no word on who did the uh, KO Sammy match. Oh, here we go. Actually, there was reported right here. Um, how can Michael Hayes go from the high of Sammy and KO to that Cody Roman match? <laughs> like, <laughs> because he's Michael Hayes. That's why he does this. Um, a shout out, though, to Jason Jordan for producing the Charlotte uh, Rhea match. That was good. Yeah. Uh, Shane Helms did the Seth Rollins, Logan Paul one. Yeah. Uh, Petey Williams did the tag match. For the men. Petey Williams is in the company. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a producer. He did the men's uh, tag match. Because the last time I saw P.D. Williams was like on Impact, maybe a couple years ago. You know, yeah, he, he made like to, a brief uh, comeback. Yeah, he moved uh, to WWE as a producer. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's get into this Oscar versus Bianca match. 
uh bianca's the, the baby face like she is the company's baby face at this point like she is the top baby face female performer yeah um, um, I I will say uh, as we start this, my thoughts go out to the uh, the little the little girl who did the contortionist act. Yeah, because uh, that that night of her her mother passed earlier that, in the day. Night, yeah, yeah. Earlier in the day, her mother moment. passed away, and Bianca she's wanted to come in because she wanted the opportunity, and mm-hmm. Bianca made her night by having her like front and center with her during that mm-hmm. intro, and it's just like you can keep the build on Bianca. Just I don't uh, yeah. I don't care like just keep it on her. She's, I don't have she's a, fucking great. <laughs> like I don't have a bad thing to say about Bianca Belair though. Like I don't care if she's face healed. I don't have one bad word to say about her. Yeah, she's an no, amazing she's, person. She's a she great really talent. Is. She is just a good person. Like last year when she had the Famu band. Um, yeah, she, was, was it Famu or was it was one of the, the HBCUs? Uh, she had one of the university like marching bands. I think yeah. if I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. I just can't remember which one. It I was, can't remember which but... one either. Um, this match had great moments. It also had a little bit of, I guess, some miscommunication at times. And I mean, it's just showed off. I think Bianca's like just raw strength too. Uh, I, I like the clash of styles that we have here. Cause we have Oscar who's like the striker yeah. submission base. And then we have uh, Bianca who's just pure strength and athleticism. Yeah. You know what the weird part about this match was? This was a really fast-paced, well-put-together match. It like, was. They were going at it the whole time. And mm-hmm. these two have incredible stamina. That's another thing I wanted to point out. That was a note I wrote, actually. I'm like... The cardio in this, this match was really good. Match. <laughs> um, yeah. Them two are cardiac monsters. Yeah, we get some uh, some two counts early on, some out-of-ring exchange. I think Asuka's trying to lock in the mission to have Bianca tap. Hmm. Uh, I made a note here that Bianca has freakish strength as she just deadlifts yes. Asuka over the rope into a superplex. He yep. has Claudio strength. It's also. like she's on the ropes, just deadlifts Asuka and hits her with a superplex. And I was like, that is insane. Like, this woman's strength is insane. I mean, but then again, you know, we saw her walk around with Otis like it was nothing either. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that was kind of... That was kind of a given right there. Bianca's just so damn strong. Mm. Deceptively. It's impressive. Uh, we, Yeah, another two counts, which is more pin attempts. She does some really Cena-like shoulder tackles, which was funny to see. Uh, Asuka has a really cool spot where she pulls Bianca by her hair into the code breaker, mm-hmm. which was a yes. really cool spot in that match. It's another two count. Uh, the mist is dodged. The hair... I think it is pulled into a ref bump. We get the KOD countered into an arm bar. And again, Bianca shows how strong she is by just deadlifting Asuka into another KOD. Like, <laughs> and it's just a good finish to this match, too. Just that whole exchange of dodging the mist, countering the KOD, and there's being deadlifted into another KOD to finish the match. Like, it's yep. crazy how strong Bianca is. Crazy but, how good both of them are. But now the thing is, like, where do you go with Asuka from at this point? You know, like, it's just, it's weird. She's just going to be the person in the company who's there to seem like a legitimate threat, but just doesn't win when it's time. Or, like, I don't know what her position in the women's division is at this point. Yeah. Uh, I I like where she is, to be honest. I like her as the, like, scrappy challenger uh, to the to the belts. I want to see Asuka and Rhea Ripley. Yeah, I think that'd be a really cool, hard-hitting match to yes to go about it. Um, I don't know who's left for Bianca at this point. Like, you're probably going to start getting a return challengers now. Yeah, but uh, Asuka's I'd, I'd kind like of gone Bailey. through everybody. So. I'd like to see Bailey to to like be the reverse of how they were in NXT. Um, with with. Bianca as the baby face and then Bailey as the heel instead of the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean this women's match was great. Like both of the women's matches were just really good and they had really they creative uh, finishes. Mm-hmm. Then we get our fifth match of the night. Here comes the money. And there goes the money, as the Twitter <laughs> post said. Just it, the Twitter post was, "Here comes the money, down goes the money." Uh, 
Shane McMahon My- returns, which yep. was crazy to see after so many years. He does the jumping over the back to back. And apparently as he jumped into the splits to dodge it is where he tore his quad. He pulled his he pulled a vent. He is tore his quad. It was a legitimate injury. And then there are videos coming out where you see the cameraman motioning to Snoop going like. Like to punch Miz <laughs> and call it on the shot and uh, Snoop hits Miz and hits him with a people's elbow and then pins him. As my, a, my my one note is this is an abject shit show. Yeah, it is an abject shit show. I mean, Snoop did great calling it on the spot yes. like that. Like it, yes. it was a mess. It was a mess of a segment, but Snoop saved it. It was entertaining. Yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah, really yeah. was. Snoop it was saved, a mess of a segment. Snoop, still. when Snoop was told to hit Miz, he knew what to do. He's like, I'm going to hit him. But then you see, I think after hitting him with the people's elbow, you see Miz's like mouth move to tell him to like pin him and yeah. stuff like that. Like they're calling it yeah. there. Some weird camera work that shows and listens to people calling shots a little uh, messy here and there, uh, but a good. Oh, it this. is a shit show moment because Shane did get legitimately injured. I will take this moment to remind you all that uh, um, the uh, Snoop Dogg is not a legitimate wrestler. He is not. Or he's not. He's not a wrestler, so he needs that pe- the people around him to direct him. So it's fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like like you're saying, uh, Snoop Dogg hit a poorly executed people's elbow to save us from this segment. Then we get the weirdest match of the night because of the injury. Yeah. And. This was a really weird Hell in a Cell match because I felt like they were going to stop a Hell in a Cell match with ref stoppage again. And I'm like, can we stop putting these supernatural things into a cell if we're just going to stop the match? <laughs> like, uh, this is the Hell in a Cell between Edge and Brood Edge. De- Brood Edge, which all that makes it Brood Edge is they slap it up on Tyantron. And they, ha- they had him come out to Slayer. Yeah, uh, and the de- and the demon uh, Finn Balor. Uh, this is another sponsored match, sponsored by the Pope's Exorcist, <laughs> or whatever that was. Oh. We had an intro by Kurt fucking Cr- uh, Russell Crowe yes. at the start of this yeah. match. Like, yeah, it, it was because well, I had to look at, I had to double take on that one. I was like, hey, this is. Russell I was Crow. really was confused. <laughs> this match like, started. I, where the hell did they get this guy for him to do this? Oh, I. Like, uh, shit. As we're doing this, uh, rewinding back just a little bit, the the IC Triple Threat was sponsored by Mike's Harder. Yes, and <laughs> I feel like they all went back and drunk some Mike's Harder lemonade <laughs> after that yeah. fucking match. Like they yeah, earned yeah, yeah. that shit. Um, yeah, anyway. Edge Edge gets his brood entrance, where admittedly it's a really cool entrance. He comes out of the uh, floor of the stage. He has like a like a mirror panel like mask on, which looked really cool. It was awesome. Uh, it starts the Slayer music. It shows Brood Edge, and then it just starts his normal theme, and it's just normal Edge going down to the ring. By the way, I it, think that was I, a brilliant a Slayer song because it was South of Heaven, which is all ironically yeah. in Priest Finisher. So yeah, uh, yeah. I so, just thought it was like a jab at uh, Judgment Day as a whole. I like I like it because it. I think if we're like going by the supernatural rules of this, is like. Edge has access to these demons. It from, was like he came out from hell. Know, like when he returned yeah, at like SummerSlam, he, came... he looked like he was coming out of like hell to return to the Judgment Day. Like yes, and so I think it was. I think it was good because it was like, well, I don't need my demons to beat you, and he, t- he takes off the masking, comes out yeah. as normal Edge. Uh, Balor hits with his original music as the demon. The crowd goes fucking nuts because of the mm-hmm. the part of it where everybody's like points up and the lights go on like that's my favorite part of that fucking intro yeah and i think just, that, i think so there was another part that was really weird about it is that they started like lowering the fps as he started like doing a slow motion thing he, yeah he but had he, smoke sticks but he has, but he, well that was fine but the problem is he has a timed entrance where it's you know at a certain timing he does the thing yeah and you have to have the cameras on the thing or yeah. that was, or it's gonna be that weird. Was a weird thing that occurred during that. I'm like, wait a minute, why are they putting the slow mo cam on Finn Balor when he's you know doing this entrance? You yeah. know, so it was just it was just a weird occurrence. Yeah, it felt uh, off. Another note here: the demon paint has some purple in it now because of Judgment Day. Right. Yeah. That um, was cool. When the match started, 
they revealed that they had color coded weapons <laughs> under the ring. Like they had kendo sticks that were painted purple and ones that were painted red. Which <laughs> I was like, is this okay. to indicate which one you're supposed to grab? <laughs> like at so, some so, point? <laughs> so we got rid of the color coded cage, but we're going to put color coded weapons under the ring instead. You know, yeah. so I guess, hey, hey, Finn, this is yours. You grab this one, you know, because it's purple. And you grab this one because I, red. I will say that Edge did ch eventually trap him in the in the cell with different colored uh, kendo sticks. I will get to that because that's a really cool spot too. Yes. It really will. Um, there's a bunch of no selling at the start of this to kind of show like, oh, they're spooky. Yeah. Um, they have supernatural powers. Edge takes some really brutal fucking kendo shots, mm -hmm. and then he traps Balor in, uh, Balor in the corner with him, and then he drop kicks him from the ring. Which was a really cool spot. Uh, it's a very slow match to start, and Finn's striking was really weird in this match to me. It kind of looked like slapping for some reason. I don't know if anybody else like noticed that. Like he was doing no, these weird hits that just looked like he was just slapping Edge. And I'm like, Finn's like, Finn's fighting really weird. Uh, some more back and I forth. Think, yeah, I, I think it's to show that he's in the demon, or he's like. He also did a lot of rah, rah, yeah, rah. It, he was just it was very weird like acting from Finn in this match mm -hmm. from a vocal and then, like an expressive kind of thing, but also just like his strikes didn't feel like they were just normal Finn strikes. Yeah, it just felt, it just felt more like a detail change from, you know, regular yeah. Finn to Demon Finn, you know. Uh, Go back and forth. Edge gets hit on the steps. DDT's Balor drop kicked into the cage, which is a really cool spot. Uh, going from the ring, hitting the cage, and then the table. Uh, Finn threw some chairs at him. One seemed to hit him legit, it looked like, when he's throwing the chairs to him outside of the ring. Yeah. And it looked like one like legitimately just like smacked Edge in the face with like the corner of it. Uh, Edge hits an unprettier, which was really cool to see. Hitting him with yeah. a Christian Cage's finisher. That's what the, And they called it that, too. And he, he hit... Both uh, that one, and he also hit uh, Gangrel's finisher, I believe. I think he did too. DDT. Yeah, um, it's an ode to his broodmate. Yeah. Then comes the weird spot of this match, where Edge grabs the ladder and throws it at Finn. We now know that Finn did get legitimately injured. A very it nasty was, fucking like, busted open to fourteen stitches and stuff like, or fourteen staples and stuff like that. Yeah. But the match dies at this point. There's about a five minute window where nothing happens. And I think it just kind of sucked all of the energy out of the crowd. Because uh, once Finn gets back in, because I'm pretty sure they might have hit him with like adrenaline or something, because Finn comes back Nine in salts. with like, he hits him well, with something because Finn comes back in with a fucking like energy to him, which was. Yeah, well, I read somewhere that during that match, they actually stapled his head back together and like put a numbing agent in it. I mean, on the you, had, you had to, I guess. To. Um, but yeah, he comes like rushing back in. I don't know if he did get like hit with like a little bit of adrenaline to kind of speed up stuff a bit. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. I make the note here that at this point, the crowd but just is obviously not feeling this match anymore. Mm. Like after that five minutes of just nothing happening. Yeah, it took the wind out of the sails of that entire match. It did. You know. uh, Finn goes for Dakota de Groff from the fucking weird platform that they had built inside of the cage. Yeah. Uh, like, goes right through the table. Uh, the crowd, at this point, is actually audibly booing. They had to turn the crowd down a and, little and, and bit. On, and on top of that, that spot made me nervous also because Dante Martin sort of broke his leg in the exact same manner. Almost. Yeah. So that made me a little nervous when he did that. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, so coup de gras, he goes up, takes ten a shot. Uh, coup de gras to the middle of the cage. In, uh, in, yeah, spear, two count, a bunch of share shots. He hits him with a concerto. Yep. And then Edge wins, and that's just the match. And I right here, this yep. is a really weird fucking match. <laughs> like, that... I. The injury I, to Finn took the wind out of this match's sails it so really hard. Like I think like, I it think, just got completely deflated. I think Finn should have won, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also always going to favor the full timers over the part timers when it comes to these kinds of matches. 
Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing I asked is like, what's the point of the demon at this point? Like, so the last time the demon was at WrestleMania, he actually won. But I feel like if it goes so long between the demon appearing, mm-hmm. then the demon coming out should be like the sign of, fuck, I'm going to lose this match. Like, yeah. It just seems like he has a longer, a larger, like, loss record on the main roster than he does a win one. Well, yeah, because he won more in in NXT. And then on top of that, when he first got into the main roster, um, when he was doing the Demon gimmick, he was winning mostly. But it's like his last two matches of the Demon, you know, this one and the one with Roman Reigns, which ended with that weird spot of him just falling off broken ropes for whatever reason. I don't know why he did that, but... Uh, it just seems to me like the demon's kind of lost all its steam because of that. Yeah. Mm. I think it's like, if you're going to bust out the demon, it should be when Finn puts away somebody fast. Mm-hmm. But like, if the demon is taking pins and everything, it's like, why is the persona even there? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. it was a really weird fucking match. Uh, this was definitely like, it wasn't as bad as or at least as uninteresting to me as the women's tag or the Brock match, but it was definitely one of the lower points of the night. Uh, after that four to five minutes, just nothing happening segment. And then we get to main event. Yep. And boy, do we have some thoughts. Man, listen. This leading up to the finish was a great match of storytelling, though. Yes. It was a great wrestling match. It was a great portrayal of heel and baby face. Uh, and it's just a good match. Like, I have a bunch of stuff. I have a ton of notes here I'm not going to go through. There were a lot of two counts. There were a lot of one counts. Like, they were just trying to get this match, like, oh, somebody was trying to get this match just pinned and over with. Uh, but eventually, in a Roman match, we're going to get the interference. Usos come in after a ref bump. Uh, KO and Sammy come in and make the save, and they don't overstay their welcome. Cody gets hit by everything, but then KO and Sammy run in, take out the Usos, and then they completely lay out Roman. Hit him with a stunner, hit him with a hell of a kick, and then they brawl with the Usos out of the ring and out of the arena. So Mm -hmm. the interference doesn't overstay its welcome. Additionally... Solo was ejected earlier in this match because the ref heard him hit Cody with the weight belt. So it's like, okay, cool. We're just getting Roman and Cody now. Yep. Uh, Again, great match. Super kicks into crossroads. I mean, Roman's just doing all of his standard power stuff. Uh, You see Cody hit his dad's punches and then elbow combo after Sammy and KO do some damage to Roman. Flip, flop, and fly. He hits them. It's a two count. And then we get the one, two crossroads and he's setting up for the third one as Heyman gets onto the ring and then solo returns. hits him with the Samoan spike and then a single spear and Cody loses. In front of John Huber's son, (laughs) everybody in the crowd deflates. Man, I like this, this was match. awful for me. <laughs> I liken this match to Mass Effect 3 that we talked about in the last yes. episode. Where this it's like, was... if you take out that last spot, it's a if, great match. If you take out that last decision-making choice of Mass Effect 3, it's a great fucking game. Yeah. W- WWE does it to you again, guys. <laughs> they it's... set you up for this incredible it's moment. An a, it's an abusive relationship, right? You. It's an abusive yeah, relationship really. at this point, isn't it? Like It, it is. They're going That's to change. They do, though. No, we're not. <laughs> like, and they keep saying uh, everything where it's like it was always the plan and all that. And I'm like, I understand it was always the plan, but like, listen to plan. The, listen to the crowd. Listen mm-hmm. to the response of the story that has been building to this point. Yes, it comes at a weird time because Roman is right there from a thousand days. And you probably want to knock Hogan down from your top guy. Yes. Which I fully understand. I fully support that. But if that's the case, don't do the Sammy Roman in Montreal. Do the Sammy and Roman here. You can 
do something else for the fucking time. They had booked themselves into a corner because they had all of these belts held hostage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the only time to lose the undisputed belt is at WrestleMania. But like, if you're not going to have Cody win the big one, don't put him in the main event at WrestleMania. And also we we're talking about too. It's like, does he win it at SummerSlam? Like that doesn't hit as good. It, as a WrestleMania moment. See, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to explain this as best as I can. Okay, the thing is, yeah, Cody winning at SummerSlam probably won't hit like it would at WrestleMania because that was the moment to do it. However, I think in the long run, I think it's supposed to make sense for Cody to be a better face because the crowd will be fully behind him when he finally does meet Throne Roman. Okay, so it would make more sense to do it somewhere down the line where it's like, hey, it finally fucking happened. You know, and Cody won't, you know, crowd won't immediately turn on him afterwards. You no, know, because Sharky, Sharky, you're a DM. You know about Hero's Journey stories. So they, they're talking about that, too. They were like, we need to give Cody some adversity. And it's like, but I don't think he the man that much, wrestled still. missing of almost missing his fucking arm against <laughs> Rollins. Like, and he that doesn't got, count. It wasn't for the title. And he got himself into more of a bait face role by backing up Sammy. He's like, mm-hmm. no, it's like, you know what? He doesn't want to see Roman versus Cody. He wants to see Sammy at Mania. Which I understand like, trying to give him more adversity, but at the same time, you know, like, they didn't, they don't do that match at WrestleMania. Just do it at some point. Sure, sure. Is it 40? It like, do they hold it off till 40 at this yeah. point? Because, like, I don't know. The Cody's WrestleMania moment since his return to WWE is losing at the biggest stage. That is the lowest point of his mo- his mania moments. Do you wait till 40 to give him his high where he wins the undisputed championship? And they just give had, him the ends of the spectrum? I, I think, no, I just think it's just time to get the belts off of Roman at some point, though. I don't think he makes it to 40. If not, if he does, they probably have something big planned for him. But other than that, I would just do it at SummerSlam. You know, because it I would will, just make more sense to me. I will say, uh, during the Heyman promo on the Monday right after... He all the pay-per-views that all the pay-per-views that him and mentioned, he's like, you're not going to get it at Backlash. You're not going to get it at SummerSlam. You're not going to get it at Survivor Series. You're not going to get it here. You're not going to get it there. He did not mention WrestleMania. And I think I it's like, I think the, that's probably the plan. The pragmatic part of me thinks we have another fucking year of Roman. Yeah. And then Cody's it's, it's going to like take it at 40 and get his winning at Mania moment. But at the same time, it's like, God damn. Because uh, my friend Josh asked the same question the moment that three count happened. Who's left? Yeah. Like, legitimately, who is left to threaten Roman Reigns? Cody was the top guy to do it. Every other baby face has fallen to Roman. Who is left? Like, how do you book for the next year when you have no legitimate challengers left mm-hmm. like it's just one of those things it's like this was it I have to start building people up a minute you at this point have an abundance of heels that cody can go against but every babyface challenger has fallen to roman reigns over the last fucking however long there Ish. was a a post that cody made uh pretty recently um that i gave showed y'all in the discord uh but as a result of how bad the monday after was yeah uh i think cody made a post is like hey i'm gonna talk about my future on this monday um and uh, i have reconsidered my contract agreement <laughs> <laughs> i don't so i don't think i don't think cody's going anywhere right but i think um it's a good way for him to you know Fost used some of his goodwill to be like, no, 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 guys, watch this Monday. It'll be good, I promise. It's just uh, you and, had and now, it. You were given it. Like you, it was a layup. Yeah, I it, get was it. A it was a layup. layup and, they missed. and they missed somehow. It was like they were going for the layup and then instantly threw it to the opposite side of the court, <laughs> like trying to hit like a just a half court fade away. <laughs> like it just didn't uh, work. So I think. Um, uh, so the press conference after this, there was a question, actually, that uh, one of the questions they asked Triple H was, um, 
you feel like you lost any momentum by not giving it to Cody. His question was, well, we're doing long-term story. His answer, rather, was that we're doing long-term storytelling. We're not doing, like, it's not short-term anymore. And so I, 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 I agree to an extent but I think you have to have less pay per views if you're gonna do like yeah, more. Yeah, you long can't have a pay per view every fucking month. You have to do it like AEW, where it's like, hey, we're gonna have four months to build these stories, and yeah. then we're gonna go to the pay per view, and we as viewers know that there is going to be a change in the status quo over the, the I mean, next four months. Will play out, and then there'll be another change to the status quo. Yeah, and we're getting like four pay per views in the next three months here because I think yeah. we got backlash coming up May sixth. We have the king and the queen of the ring, which is going to be in Saudi Arabia on the 27th. We're not going to be covering that. We're not going to be covering that. We're not covering that. All right. And then there's going to be, um, that there was something on, uh, July 1st, which was money in the bank. That's money in the bank, July 1st. And then we have SummerSlam August 5th. So, you know, they have like four pay per views in in that short period of time. And that is, that is just for WWE. Yeah. Because we also have, uh, May double or nothing and forbidden then door. June forbidden door and then sometime There's in July uh, some assuming July uh, fighter fest so. yeah they're doing so, so basically yeah I think they're doing um the king and queen in the ring in Saudi Arabia at the same time as double or nothing I think I'm going to be watching double or nothing you know yeah as, well, we're not going to be covering the uh, Saudi Arabian door. events because they're not yeah. considered canon by WWE, and also we're not going to cover anything from Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, so I think we'll. Do, I think I think I'm just going to, you know, pay attention to Double or Nothing more yeah. instead. That's a setup for um, unless for they take the belt off of Roman at King of the Ring. I don't think anything worth mentioning is going to happen. <laughs> no, and but they're not going to take the belts off of Roman King and Queen of the Ring. So. But yeah, it's going to be a busy few months of uh, wrestling. I am curious to see where this story goes now. Because the Monday after Raw did not give us anything about current stories. They gave us an hour of wrestling on a three-hour show. Uh, and then nothing else happened. They had Seth come out for his segment and then was told to go back. It was yeah, a it got cut in disaster the, got in of a Monday. Yeah. Um yeah, I just if in Vince is back in some form of capacity and creative, even if they say that he's not, it's like God, what the fuck is gonna happen over this next year? Just Well Well, judging from what I've seen on Raw this week, um I'm pretty certain that Vince has some involvement in this. A lot of involvement. You know, and uh it shows. So yeah. I don't know where creatively WWE is going to go with him at the helm again. You know, I don't so happens in the last nine months of WWE that Triple H just built up. Did we just go? You know, did he just nuke the whole thing and start from scratch? I, you got you got to keep in mind he's he's not he doesn't have a job in WWE per se. He's in charge of the the merged company. He's a new co. He's a new co or whatever. Yeah, he's he's a he's an executive in new co. But he does. He doesn't. It's still the guy who's in who, Nick Khan, who is still the direct, uh, president of WWE. Yeah. And uh, so while, yes, he probably does have just a little bit of say, it's the same as like. So if you go to like a retail place and you're like and you're and the corporate manager comes by, it's the same as that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, not, he's not, he's still majority shareholder. So uh, his word is law basically still. Sure. Uh, if but he's Fred, got a lot of other shit he has to take care of. Yeah, any decision for the company is ultimately Vince's because he owns majority. It's just, God, it was like it was such a good weekend leading up to Cody taking the pin. It's yeah, just it took the sit wind out of everybody's fucking sails. And, and it, now, and now, and now, Cody's in the. Wait, I guess he's in the he's feud with Brock now, just to keep him busy until. Yeah, I guess to show his playing. adversity, like everybody else, he has to go through Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, I think they're trying to do like uh, hard times, like you know, with like Dusty. If you can let Cody cut a hard times promo before winning at forty or something, 
then sure i'll give the storyline it but <laughs> you over the next year you also have to make this storyline fucking compelling yes because i was invested in again it. i was invested and then you just completely like took me out of it by having roman retain well the thing is they can make compelling storylines as evidenced by the main events both nights yeah like and... they can do it and like even now they're teasing they're teasing the the like splintering of the the usos and from the bloodline so you know the 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 wheels are turning however slowly they may be turning it's definitely like solidified solo as roman's new like right hand guy yeah so like roman's not the threat anymore solo is whenever you're in a match with roman like it's definitely built him up to that uh so that's good solo looks like a star yes that was just a really good uh change for him but, so Solo's also really good at that, like at the like sit there and look he's, like a tough he's guy. The enforcer. He's the enforcer. Oh. Like if you look at a faction, you have the leader, you have the enforcer, you have the tag team, you have the speaker. He, he's the enforcer. Um, but yeah, like after that Monday, just also seeing FTR gets titles back because like we're saying with AEW, Jay White coming out in the first three minutes of uh wednesday night dynamite it's like yeah nobody's going to fucking wwe if this is back yeah. <laughs> oh, like... and then he just and then he just drops the announcement of oh yeah by the way we're heading to london also for all in we're bringing yeah. the pay-per-view back that 31 started years, this company. 31 years to the day of british bulldog pinning bret hart we're bringing was all like... in to wembley stadium <laughs> Oh, and I read somewhere that they have 25,000 people pre-registered yeah. for tickets. 25,000 tickets have already been pre, uh, pre-ordered. pre Yeah, so they're going to probably sell this out. Then they also was like, hey, and like Wednesday was just like a big fuck you to the Monday night because it's like, hey, we not only got Jay White, we got Nigel McGinnis back in Ring of Honor. Nigel right. McGinnis just fucking pulls up and like started doing commentary like nothing. Yeah. Uh, I think in overall, though, it was like a heartbreak weekend uh, for 1v1s in wrestling because Eddie Kingston lost his title match. Uh, Mark Briscoe lost to Samoa Joe for the TV title. And then Cody loses for the <laughs> Undisputed. <laughs> That's like, God. Tri- I'm like, God the tri- damn it, man. How are you going to do that to Eddie Kingston, though? Because this was the match that Claudio owed him before Cesaro went to uh, WWE. And you're still going to have Claudio go over Eddie like that. This was the trifecta of heartbreak this weekend. It really yeah. was. It, it was. But like at least one match ended with the at least one like long term story match ended with the proper finish. And that was Sammy and KO. Yeah. Taking the titles off the Usos. Like at least we got that finish. If we had gone back to back disappointment. I don't think WWE's fans would be uh, responsive to a Monday night show. Yeah. Like, God damn it. Another fucking year of the bloodline. <laughs> like, <laughs> now we can like start said, seeing the, 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 the wheels are turning just yeah. little by little. They said it too during the match with KO and Sammy. And it's like, this is the return of main event. Jay. Like, and I'm it like, yeah, it better is. fucking be <laughs> like, but yeah. I mean, this was a fantastic WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were some low points, but overall, like the in-ring performance of a lot of these matches was incredible. It definitely did feel like a takeover show. Um, it was definitely felt like a fucking indie show with the Usos and Sammy and KO. Like you're seeing a lot of the PWG spots and everything. So I'm glad that they were given freedom and time to actually like perform in the ring for a lot of these matches. Yeah, like overall, I think this is one of this is in my top ten of WrestleManias. Honestly, this was a well put together event. You know, yeah, you had a few stinkers here and there, but overall, like I love the WrestleMania set itself. That was beautiful. The atmosphere, mm-hmm. you know, WrestleMania in the stadium just feels different. It, it you know, is as a big fight. To, like, the regular arena. It is. It is like you know, top ranked boxing. You know, shout out. Feel. Shout out to Samantha Irvin who really put the energy in those title match announcements. Oh, uh, she's the best in the company as far as announcing yeah. goes. That was also yeah. something that was pointed out. Uh, the Charlotte and Rhea match was the female performers, a female ref, and a female ring announcer. It was the yes. first time in the company's history. So, good for that also. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I guess we're waiting till Backlash. 
Like, what's the next fucking yeah. pay-per-view? It's Backlash, Backlash in like three weeks. God, I guess we're waiting no, to see I, I, I wherever think... Roman goes from here. Well, I don't think he's scheduled to wrestle at Backlash, so we're probably going to be waiting a little longer. We're probably going to be exactly seeing Brock happened. and Cody then. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Like, but then what happens, Let's like, keep... if he beats Brock at the first... So if he beats Brock at Backlash, then who does he go through to get to Roman again? by wrestlemania or does he lose to brock at backlash and just look like a bigger fucking idiot like it's like literally where there is no good booking decision here win or lose like cody's yeah. momentum is out the window at this point like it's it's so dumb but mm. i don't know i guess we'll trust the process gotta trust the process meanwhile aw's yeah, like just gotta here's everybody you want we're keeping FTR. We've officially signed Sky Blue. Like, <laughs> just, hey, we're giving you guys everything you fucking want because the other company isn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, thank God for an alternative at least. At least I can watch something else if I'm pissed off at WWE. Yeah. And you even have a day where you can watch one or the other on Fridays. And even now, they're like, hey, next next Wednesday, you're giving us uh, Buddy Murphy versus Orange Cassidy for the Intercontinental title? Yeah, let's fucking go. Like, I'm all for it. Yeah, just and, oh, give Buddy I, Murphy I think that's the other. I think that's the other thing uh, that AEW and WWE do differently. It's like, it's like WWE is like, no, no, no. Just watch next week. Just trust us. And then AEW is like, this is our card. Yeah, you're... You're given the mystery bag from WWE, mm. and it's like, it could be good, it could be bad. And Tony Khan's like, run a line of cocaine. You guys want to see an inter an international title match next week with Buddy Murphy? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yep. I got it, it, it snorts a line. I got people, another announcement for you. People saw that one exchange in the trios match between Orange Cassidy and Buddy Murphy, and Tony Khan's like, I can make a wrestling match out of that. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Stu, uh, Sue came back, which was really funny. He's like, I'm going to just drop all the classic AEW bombs on this Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. We got a, we got, we got Stu back or Sue back. She's dropping the boys off in her minivan. And I'm like, this is the dumb shit that I love from wrestling. Like just the trios challengers being dropped off by one of their moms is like one of those, just the, it's just like it's that fun that I don't get in WWE. Yeah. You know, like in WWE, they would make it like overly serious and then eventually it would become like Buff Bagwell's mom on a forklift, like in WCW. But it's just like, no, she just drops the boys off and then they put on a banger of a match. So mm -hmm. and then Buddy, uh that was cool. I think Buddy also stomped uh Chuck Taylor to pin him. It's like, oh, still pulling some books from uh from Rollins playbook there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotta love wrestling history. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, really good until the end. I guess we see where Backlash goes. If Cody and Brock have to finish their shit there or not. Ugh. This monthly pay-per-view thing for WWE is just a pain in the ass because they get no time to let stories, like, percolate and yeah. all that. Like, four weeks of something and then a match. It's like, that's not good development time it truly isn't it isn't and then it's, and then we go right into him just machine gunning pay-per-views it's just like okay what are we keeping up with exactly you know mm -hmm. are you, what are you going to give us for all of this stuff going on we're just going to keep cody busy until it's time for him to you know win money in the bank or you know or we going to wrestlemania all with this whole storyline again moments going to be champion for another year this, I don't know, everything at this point with WWE is up in the air, so I guess we just have to watch and find out. They had yeah. the cleanest, like, the clearest line of where all the storytelling could go, and now because Cody didn't win the titles, it's all just, like, so murky and cloudy, it's like, I don't know where the fuck this company goes at this point. <laughs> like, but, yeah, I mean, that's all I have to really say about it. I enjoyed this WrestleMania. I mean, I have my thoughts about some of the finishes and some of the match quality, like on day two, but overall, a very fantastic weekend of wrestling. It was very well done. Very it, it well was, done. It was amazing. I enjoyed it. It 
it would have just been a better feel good story if it was a stunner, hell of a kick, triple crossroads, one, two, three. Sure. But no. We'll, <laughs> like, we'll get there. We'll get there when we get there. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, Cody, man, there's four of them and three of you. You couldn't recruit somebody. Like Don't you have don't you have some spare nightmare family members to go find somewhere? You couldn't bring in Matt Cardona. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, he'd have to return all 11 of the uh, indie company belts that he has. You see him on the Jericho cruise? Uh, Matt Cardona came out with like three belts on his waist and like four on each of his arms. Right, and, just standing right there. Now. and I'm like, this man just owns the entire championship of the entire indie scene. He just <laughs> like, calls himself the, the indie Indies. god. The indie yeah. god, Matt Cardona. <laughs> but yeah. So I got nothing else to say about this weekend. Anybody else? Uh, this week in general, yeah, I think I think we're pretty good. I think uh, I think them not doing a thing like not finishing storylines as they normally do is indicative of them taking more long term storytelling. But it also just devalues a lot of your pay per views if that's the direction you go because if you change if you change stuff up every like three or four months, that's cool. But, like, the backlash isn't going to mean anything. The money in the bank might mean something later on down the line, because that's what they do for long-term storytelling in general anyway. Um, but then, you know, backlash doesn't mean anything. Then the next one doesn't mean anything, and so on and so forth. And just just give me a pay-per-view every, like, three months instead, if you're going to do that. So I'm yeah. getting a little... I'm, I'm drowning in WWE stuff right now. There needs to be a creative finish. Or a money in the bank match. Like I'm just thinking about it, and it's like, what if Sammy or KO like wins money in the bank? And I can imagine like WrestleMania 40 or something. It's like both Cody and Roman are out in the middle of the ring, match still going on. Sammy comes out, cashes in. Everybody's like, "Oh, what are you doing, Sammy?" But Sammy lays down and pulls Cody on top of him. <laughs> like imagine that. Like so, Sammy just lays down and pulls Cody on top, That's... so Cody pins an active match participant. And that's on WCW. And that is that's next week on WCW booking. <laughs> <laughs> WCW Raw. But like other, does Cody win at, that. does Cody win at Money in the Bank? Does somebody else win at Money in the Bank? Does Cody now have to contend with Roman and somebody else at WrestleMania? It's like mm-hmm. where does all the storytelling go if you are going to have pay-per-view every month? Like it's just I think I think the best way to do this is you, you like you resolve a storyline every like when you have a pay-per-view right yeah so they in wrestlemania they resolved the uso one or the usos and cody and uh sammy uh ko yeah uh so the next one the and they also resolved like the rare ripley uh charlotte one which is however short it might have been yeah the next pay-per-view they resolve a different storyline and they eventually get to cody roman yeah it's just i don't know i feel like i'm just going to be emotionally abused again when next event, sure. when next WrestleMania sure. comes around, so for sure, w, give it time. WWE puts together long term booking, but that doesn't mean it's not a draining process at the same time. Yes, you know? yeah, it's like it's so so draining to be invested and then just have your investment be shit on. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's, that's why well pulled. In this thing, it's like I understand AEW can be predictable because the booking is predictable, but it's predictable because it makes fucking sense. Like. It yeah. makes fucking sense for somebody to go over somebody else at this pay-per-view. You know, like, it makes sense for somebody to retain. It's like, you can kind of see where these finishes will come from. Because a lot of time, a lot of champions get their four-month reign. And then we get somebody else. Or they win, and then the next pay-per-view, the next challenger takes it off of them. Like, it, it's all, it all makes sense. And I could be invested because it's like, okay, cool. I'm not going to be insulted by this finish or committing myself to watching this. But I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see what the backlash episode brings for us and how disappointed we'll be at that. <laughs> so uh, I can only imagine if Vince is back. How long do Sammy and KO hold the titles? Like, that's the thing. How long before KO turns on Sammy, like he's always done? Yeah, I mean he he just does that regardless of what where he is. 
KO has turned on more teammates than anybody else, I think people would start questioning his loyalty a little bit. <laughs> but, I don't know. That's really all I got for today. Yep, that's all I got. Anything you want to throw out? Like some final thoughts? Um, just NXT stand and deliver was fantastic. I thought it was that was yeah. a fantastic show. That, that was, was really good. Up to WrestleMania this weekend. Um, just go go watch that. It it was. I have some hope for that show. Yeah. But beyond that, WrestleMania was pretty decent. Um, yeah, high spots, low spots, all of them. You know, it is what it is. I guess we're just in limbo, waiting to see what WWE exactly is going to do next with all of these storylines and stuff. And, uh, and what's going to, tra- and what's going to unfold with this whole Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns situation, you know, and I guess they're going to keep Cody busy with Brock, you know, maybe for a couple pay-per-views and what, does he win it money in the you bank? Know, or why, what are happens even, why, are even, why are we even kidding ourselves? This is about to be a Cody versus Brock, like seven month feud. Oh, of course. Like, probably. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I think it's months. I was going to say, I don't think he's got seven months in him. What? It was like on Thursday. It was Judgment Day. It's like, let's talk about Edge. And it's like, let's not. It's been eight months. Like, <laughs> just move on to somebody else, Judgment Day, please. I beg you. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, God damn it. We have a, a bunch of fucking matches and rematches headed our way. We probably do. But we'll talk about that when they come up. We'll get so. there when we get there. Yeah. I guess oh, that wow. will, uh, yeah. I guess that will conclude this episode of Square Triangle for this month. We're gonna have yeah. a very busy uh, June, July. It feels like. Yep. But we'll get to that uh, when we get to that. And thank you all for joining us. X, thanks for being here. As usual, and, uh, yeah. always a pleasure. About two hours of uh, content for you guys today. So let us know if you like That's these, cool. like if you like these, like longer episodes, just kind of on a monthly basis or. Because, yeah, I enjoy talking about, like, this whole thing. I mean, probably a future episode won't be this long. This is the longest event of the year for WWE. It was, it was also a two-night weekend, so. Yeah, so Backlash is going to be one night, you know, six hours of wrestling. So a lot of the pay-per-views won't be too long, so it shouldn't be yeah. too long of episodes. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we hope you liked it. If you are watching on YouTube, you know, leave a comment. What was your favorite match of the night? Or where do you think this whole Cody Rhodes situation goes? Um, yeah, I mean, I got nothing else. So yep. I'm Sharky at joined by Deca Volti and our friend Xavier here. And uh, we three will see you all next month for our next pay-per-view uh, review. And Deck and I will see you. Uh, hopefully this week on the without context podcast i know we missed last week uh no we got last week with uh, alvin our uh, game sequel episode Hi. uh sorry we didn't have anything this friday though uh we like i said the week was kind of off a little hectic yeah uh yeah. i think we were supposed to record this on wednesday and have yeah. this go up on friday but you know stuff happened so be like that hopefully we'll be back on our normal schedule next week and until then, take care, everybody. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, Bye. Everybody. See you later. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Squared Triangle. Find us wherever you get your podcasts under the Without Context Podcast. Find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at WC Network.